there was a man, and his name is John. He was sent as a forerunner. He was sent as a herald, a herald before the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was also sent as a witness to the light, Christ himself being the light of the world. So he was identified, John the Baptist was identified as the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. And this is mentioned in the text here, make straight the way of the Lord. But while John came into that place, and when the Lord Jesus Christ came out from water after being baptized, John heard the voice from heaven. And the voice said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So from now on, John the Baptist will not just be preaching, but he will point out men and women to the Savior. And the Savior is again the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to draw your attention because he makes a very important statement. And when he pointed men, uh, the savior to men and women to sinners, he said, behold the Lamb of God. Why is that? Because he, he could have used, used so many other words. He could have said, behold the healer. He could have said, behold the prophet. He could have said, behold the teacher. Or he could have also said, behold the great example. But he said, behold the Lamb of God. Normally when we speak, we don't often call people or a person a lamb. <laughs> but here, the lamb is a person. And when you read the text, you, you follow it very carefully, you can see that even though it is not common to call a, a, a person a lamb, when he said, behold the lamb of God, he meant a person. Which means that he found in the Lord Jesus Christ, of course, in a figure of speech, you can say that, but in, normal, in our normal vocula, vocula, vocuba, uh, vocib, vocabulary, <laughs> vocabulary, we don't use such an expression. So John looked at the Lord Jesus Christ and he knew that Jesus is different. He is the Lamb of God. He pre-existed before his birth. And even the way he puts it, Christ existed before John himself. While we know when you, you, you follow the chronology, John the Baptist was born before Jesus, but he said Jesus was before him, which means that the Lord Jesus Christ pre-existed before his coming, before his incarnation. Why? Because he is God, he is the word, he is the word becoming flesh, John 1 verse 14, but he is also the light, John 8 verse 12, Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall never walk, walk in darkness. But also, you can see that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. No man has ever seen God. Do you want to see God? Do you want to know God? The Lord Jesus Christ is the way. Who has seen me, he said, has seen the Father. Who has seen me has also seen God. So there is no way we shouldn't deceive ourselves. There is no other way to be reconciled with the living God. If there was one, another one, we would have told you. But the Lord Jesus Christ himself in John chapter 14, verse 6, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. 
No man shall come to the Father except, except by me. So when he speaks about Jesus being the Lamb of God, he is the Lamb, I'm sure you have noticed it, he is the Lamb of God, the Lamb from God, not the Lamb of men. Because up till now, all the sacrifices which happened in the Old Testament were sacrifices made by men. And animals were concerned, not people, not a man. But for the first time, here is a man being described, qualified as being the Lamb of God. The mighty God of the Old Testament, the Jehovah of the Old Testament, is the Jehoshua. The, the, the Jesus is actually the short version of the word Jehoshua or Jehovah, because his name, the name Jesus means God saves. That's the meaning of his name. So the Jehovah of the Old Testament is exactly the Jesus of the New Testament. So here are 13 words. You can count them for yourself. John 1, 29. Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. 13 words. Just 13 words. But they are able to take a sinner from this earth and transport him into heaven and make his name be written in the, in the book of the Lamb of God. That's a miracle. You and me from this, in this earth, sinners, doomed, condemned, but here we can cry unto the living God and we can have fellowship, we can have reconciliation, we can have our prayers to be answered by the, by the living God. So there are a few aspects when I, I look at John 1, verse 29. I would like to bring forth tonight, hopefully, with, with the prayer that there is a sinner who has never seek and find the Lord, who has never thought about spiritual and eternal matters. And the first thing, when John said, behold the Lamb of God, the first thing I would like to put before you, he is mentioning that Jesus is the promised Lamb. He is the promised Savior. Oh, this needs an, explica an explanation. Because from the time man has sinned against God, Adam and Eve, they have sinned against God. Genesis 3 verse 15, that's the first promise of the Bible. From that time when God, when man rebelled, they said they don't want God. They want to do their own ideas, their own imagination. They want to concoct their own religion. From that time, God gave a promise that one day he will send a, a, a savior, and that savior will be, will be wounded in his heel, but he will crush the head of the devil. Our enemies, the world, Satan, and the flesh. Jesus died on the cross of Calvary to overcome the world, to overcome death, to overcome sin, to overcome the devil, but to overcome our own hearts because our hearts are stony. The tiger, the leopard cannot change anything in, his, in the stripes, in the spot on his skin. The same, we cannot change our nature. Our nature is so polluted. That's why we need a savior. And God promised that there will be a savior coming to redeem men and women from their sins. So progressively, God is unfolding that plan. <laughs> and this is why you will see, first of all, he sent many, many prophets. Many prophets came just to preach the, 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 the grace of God. This, this was their duty. Because remember, a prophet's duty is to represent God before men. So they were preaching on behalf of God towards men. Oh, listen, throughout 39 books in the Old Testament, there is only one message to wrap it up in one sentence. The Savior is coming. The Savior is coming. And in the 27 books of the New Testament, the Savior has come. The Savior has come. That's the message of the Bible. So there was a promise, God promised that there will be a savior. 
and he sent prom, uh, prophets, but he sent also, he chose also a nation, the nation of Israel. Oh, believe me, when you read Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7 and 8, Israel was not better than the other nations. They were not so special. They were not numerous. They were, it was just because of the unconditional love of God and because of his sovereignty. If you are saved tonight, if you come to know Christ, it's not because there is something special within you. You are smarter, you are more intelligent, or you have a better job than the other person, or you eat better food. No. It's the grace of God, his unconditional love and his sovereignty. So God chose those people, chose Israel, and they were supposed to be example to the other nations or the way God will deal with them. Then the other nations will see, oh, God must be with these people. We want to know this God. We want to have fellowship with such God. But unfortunately, we know many of them have failed. But God didn't stop there. So he gave many sacrifices, many rituals, many ceremonies. But every ceremony, every ritual, and all the sacrifices of the Old Testament, they were to teach the people, oh, wait, wait, one day a great Savior will come. God himself will step down on this earth. As I was saying last time, normally the coming of God on this earth should be, should be the headline of every newspaper in this world. But they are against God. They don't want to hear about God. Maybe this is where you are tonight. I'm my own God. I don't need God. You know, I have a good job. I have a nice car. All the latest devices, I have them. I, 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 why do I need God? But the promised Savior must come in order to save sinners from their sins. And we will come and explain more on that. So the, the Savior was promised long time ago. And he came. And that Savior, when he came, John the Baptist stood. He was his forerunner and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Maybe I said too much on, on this first, first element. But it's very important to remember that the Jews were very familiar with the expression from the Old Testament. They knew all about sacrifices, about the rituals, about the ceremonies, and so on. And they are familiar with it because in their institution, in their system, everyday sacrifices were given. Every day, in the morning, in the evening, and there are days. There are days when even the sacrifices were doubled and multiplied, and, and this is done day after day, nonstop. So they know what John meant when he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So just to give you a, an illustration related to the sacrifices which, which were given in the Old Testament, there are... There are two kinds of sacrifices when it comes to animals. Just to illustrate what I'm saying, a, an animal can be taken. It can be an ox, it can be a lamb, it can be a goat. And the first kind of sacrifice, it, it is called the burn offering. The whole animal was burnt, burnt completely in a place. And now the animal, everything becomes ashes. And this has a very important application for the people. Or oh, in the same way that that animal became ashes means nothing, let my sins also become nothing. That's the meaning in the Old Testament. But there is a second animal they were uh, sacrificing. That animal can be a goat, it can be a lamb. And now, when the priest takes the goat, he confesses his own sins, and he confesses the sin of the people on the head of that animal. And later, the animal was taken and driven away in the wilderness. So in that wilderness, it, it, it draws a parallel. The people are saying in the same way that that animal was driven away so far from us, oh Lord, make our sins also be driven away from us. 
That's the parallel we should draw in relation to the sacrifices which were made in the Old Testament. But just to take one last example, uh, we could have listed many of them, that we remember the record or the story about Abraham. As a test of his faith, God asked Abraham to offer his only son, Isaac. So they were going, and the place where they were supposed to give that sacrifice takes three days. So they walked for three days, and when they came to a certain place, the son Isaac looked at his father and said to his father, Father, here is the wood, but where is the sacrifice? And we remember Jehovah Jireh, the Abraham said to his son, the Lord shall provide the lamb. And the Lord provided. So you can guess, you can, you can read what was happening in John the Baptist's mind in this particular time. Remembering all the sacrifices, all the ceremonies, the rituals in the Old Testament. Now he can say, behold, the Lamb of God. So the first thing we learn when he said that, that Jesus is the promised Lamb, he is the promised Savior. The second, Christ is the Passover lamb. I wouldn't dwell too much on this because it's a well-known well -known aspect also for those who read the scripture. But we remember when the people of God were still in Egypt and God said to Pharaoh to let his people go. But Pharaoh said no. And in doing that, God decided to, set, to send 10 plagues on Egypt. And the last plague was that the, all the firstborn in every household will die that night. So in order to be spared, in order to be, uh, uh, to be safe, every member of the household of God must put blood. That night they must slaughter, they have to slaughter a lamb and put the blood of that lamb on the, door po on, the, on the doorpost of every household. So now, when the, the angel of death is passing by, when he sees the blood, that's the meaning of the word Passover. So that family, that house will be spared because they see the blood. So now, Jesus Christ, when John the Baptist saw Jesus Christ, he said, behold, the lamb of God, remembering that whoever believeth in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, repenting from his sins, looking on what he, he did on the cross of Calvary, he died an indescriptible agony on that cross, just looking and trusting, believing, yielding your life into the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord will also spare your life. The third one, not just the promised lamb, the Passover lamb, but Jesus is also the prophetic lamb. Is the prophetic lamb. And I, I, I'm sure you saw the article. There is a definite article in the text. Behold a lamb? No. The lamb. The only lamb. This lamb is quite different than any other lamb. He's the special one. He's the unique one. And you go back again to the Old Testament. There are 39 books in the Old Testament, but Christ and his blood and being the lamb of God is the running cable from Genesis to Malachi, even if I can say all over the New Testament, also from Genesis to Revelation. The running cable of the, of, in the Bible is the work and the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And his blood is everywhere in the scriptures. Christ died for sinners and he gave his life for, for sinners. So he's the promised lamb which was promised in the Old Testament to Abraham, to the nation of Israel, to the people, Gentiles. And now John the Baptist see Jesus Christ and he said openly, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. But fourthly, oh, he's the promised lamb. He's the Passover lamb. He's the prophetic lamb. But he's also the pardoning lamb. He gives pardon. He gives forgiveness of sin. Let me read again the text because it's very clear from it. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin. 
Why did Christ come in this world? One purpose. The Son of Man came to seek and find that which was lost. He came to seek sinners. He came to seek those who were lost and to give them eternal life. That's the purpose for which Jesus Christ came. But we have to mention something important. And sin is our real problem. That's why Jesus Christ came to remove, to take away, to obliterate, to blot out, and to cover sin. That's the reason why he came. And behold the Lamb of God which taketh away sin. Not just take some, but take it away completely. That every sinner who has received forgiveness of sins will be washed away from every sin in his life. And that's why never take sin lightly. We are polluted from within and without. The whole body is sick from the head to the toe. <laughs> we need a savior because the soul needs a savior. The soul without Christ will, will, will experience eternal death in hell. So that's why the Lord Jesus Christ came. He is the only one qualified to bear our sin. Because nobody is qualified. Nobody can do it. Because to be qualified to, to forgive or to give pardon of sin, the person must be himself without sin. That's the reason why God himself, the living God, one God in three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the living God came down in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He became a man without sin, without ceasing to be God in order to be a bridge between or, or a leather between man and the living God. Oh, what shall you do with your sins? Sin is what really, sin is a guilt. This is why you see people in the street, or maybe you are here, you think you are happy and so on, but within yourself, you know, there is, there is a guilt. There is a mountain of heaviness upon your soul. And there is no way, there is no way to be, to be forgiven and, unless the sinner looks at the, the work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. So Christ accepted to leave heaven and come down on this earth to bear our sins, but to carry away our sorrows also. No one was qualified except him. And when he came, in Revelation we are told that he looked like a, a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. But now, I spoke about the promised lamb, I spoke about the Passover lamb. I spoke about the prophetic lamb. He, that's Jesus Christ. And then we spoke about the pardoning lamb. But who are we then? <laughs> He's the lamb of God. Who are we? We are lost sheep. Oh, we think we, we think we are so special, you know. We have credentials, we have a pedigree, and so that makes us to boast to put ourselves on a pedestal. But we are just lost sheep. It's not a nice name to be called with. But this is how God looks at us. Who are we? Lost sheep, all like sheep, have gone astray. And each one of us walk in his own way. And we have sinned in so many ways. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is no way to approach God. Impossible. He is holy. God is mighty. He is holy. We are sinners. How can the polluted have fellowship with, the, with the, the holy one? It's impossible. When we come to God without having our sins forgiven, you know what happens? His mighty power will just crush us down. This is why we need a savior. Oh, our guilt is too much. You know, Water cannot clean us. Bleach cannot do anything. Soaps cannot do anything. Sulfuric acid cannot do anything. Fire cannot do anything in relation to our sins. This is why the only person who can wash us and clean us and make us whiter than snow 
we are told in the scriptures is the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. He came to deal with our condition and to provide a remedy for our corruption. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ came. And the fifth one, Christ is the providing lamb. He's not just the pardoning lamb, he's also the providing. He provides. What does he provide? Oh, man couldn't provide, but God did. God claimed the Lord Jesus Christ and commissioned him. So he came. Do you see the text? It's in the present tense. Behold the Lamb of God which take it away. It's in the present tense, which means that Christ is still saving sinners today. He's still the Savior today. And this is why we are told today, if you hear his voice, do not hearken, do not harden your heart. He said, come unto me, all of you. So the Savior, he still saves anyone who comes to him. He is the Savior not just for a nation or a race, but he is a Savior for anyone who believes it in him. That's no religion, believe me, no religion can give you such, such assurance and such promises except the Bible. It is without distinction of every land, sinners of every land, of every nation, every type of person, and all sorts of sinners. We, are, we can freely come. There is no sin that he cannot take away. Christ is the worldwide savior. That's his name, the worldwide savior. He can save any sinner. Just cry unto him. Give him your heart and, oh Lord, I need you. I need you for my soul. I need you for my salvation. Without thee, Lord, it is impossible to be reconciled with God. It is impossible to have fellowship with the living God. It is impossible to, to enter into heaven because sin will pollute heaven and heaven is a perfect place. Oh, as I come to conclusion, you may say, yes, I heard Christ is the promised lamb. He's the Passover lamb. He's the prophetic lamb. He is the pardoning lamb, but he is also the, provide, the providing lamb. What can I do tonight to be saved? And there is a small word who gives us the answer. And it's the word behold. That says it all. The only condition God is requesting from sinners, and I'm saying condition because it's not your condition. It is the condition God himself has put. So it's not about you, it's about God's will and what he wants from sinners. And behold is a small word, but it is an exclamation. What does it mean? Oh, it means look. You know, there are so many things we look we shouldn't be looking at. <laughs> the only person, the only savior, the only instrument, if I can put it that way, we should be looking at is the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's the invitation. Look, pay attention, consider, see what God has done on behalf of sinners. Oh, look upon Jesus Christ by faith and you shall be saved and cleansed from all your sins. There is no mistake. There is no confusion of persons. As soon as John the Baptist saw the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, behold, it's him. It's him, no one else. No one else could be qualified. He's the only one who fits in all the prophecies from the Old Testament. Believe in him. He's the savior. But also behold, in the word behold, there is an expectation. There is a waiting. Look, consider the person you have waited for all your life. Oh, you wanted to have joy in pleasures, in luxury, in sin, in drugs, in alcohol, and so on. But all those things didn't work. They just crush you down again. But look, look, see, consider. He's the one who will take away that thirst in your heart, in your life, but also in your mind. Oh, come to Christ. Listen, look, and live.
That's the message of the gospel. Come to Christ, he paid the price. God made a way to escape his holy anger in the day of judgment. Yield your life to him, trust him, and believe in him. The only condition is to look. Look, listen, and live. And Christ did it all. We have nothing to do. Because if you did something to earn salvation, you will boast about it. But as I close, there is a result. I hope the same result will happen tonight as you hear the, the gospel of redeeming grace. There is, there, look verse 27, verse 27. Oh, 37, I beg, I beg your pardon. Verse 37. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed him. Oh, the message didn't fall in the ears of a deaf person. They heard the message, Behold, Christ, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So the two disciples separated themselves from the crowd, and now they follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can see in verse 38 what happened to them as I close. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? And verse 39, he said unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day. So they separated themselves from the crowd, from the mass, they follow the, the Lord Jesus Christ, and they abode, they stay with the Lord Jesus Christ. And from the conversion of those two disciples started the early church, and you can see from those two seats the millions later people were converted. Oh, isn't that amazing that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross? He is the provider, but he is also the provision for sinners. He is both the provision and the provider. Can I invite you as ordinary preacher to repent and look unto the cross of Calvary and ask Christ to forgive all your sins. He is the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Let's pray together. O God, our gracious heavenly Father, Lord, we thank thee that salvation is still possible, that the Lord Jesus Christ has made a way for sinners to know God and to be reconciled with the living God. O Lord, bless again any man, any woman who is anxious about her soul or his soul. Grant salvation tonight in this place, Lord. Bless us as we continue to worship the, the living God and make again us to remember that Christ is the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. In his name we pray. Amen.